It was John 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Okay. I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to this God's house. Today we are blessed that we have the opportunity of worshiping with him and with each other. As I said during my prayer up front here, it was nice to hear all the talking out here because that means that we are communicating with each other, which is a very great blessing that we have as well as being part of your family. At the church I grew up in, we weren't allowed to say a word. We were supposed to be quiet. Before I start announcements, last week I was uh, talking to some people and I mentioned that when people look at the video of, the, of our church service, they think nobody is here because they don't see anybody. So I said people should sit at the front and I want to commend Len and Shauna for coming and sitting at the front. <laughs> and I would encourage more of you to do that because that is a comment that I have got. That church looks empty and we are here. And therefore, we should move closer to the front. Announcements. Everybody's welcome to join us downstairs after the third for coffee, tea, food, and fellowship. Tuesday, 9.30, prayer group for the ladies at 10 o'clock. Men and women Bible study. Tuesday at 11.30 is a time of crafts. Anybody would like to request a hymn to sing during the service, please talk to Shannon or myself. There's a song that you would like to sing that we haven't sung for a while, and or if it's even not even in our handbook, please let us know, and uh, we will uh, try to incorporate it into our services as we go along. Um, October 9th to the 27th, bereavement support. Uh, Wednesday, St. Peter Lutheran Church, 133. November the 9th, purchase a turkey dinner, eat in or take out from St. John's United Church. November the 11th, there will be no ecumenical church service after the Cenopath service. And may I ask why? It was a decision of the Wake Group. Decision of the Wake Group? Yeah. Okay. November the 12th, the auxiliary meets set up for the bazaar at 11.30. That means the men will also have to meet or we're not going to take the tables down there. Not taking the tables down, so okay, we don't have to help, good. November the 16th, our bake sale and bazaar will run from 10 to 2. Next congregation business meeting will be our annual meeting, we held on November the 24th. Um, after church, lunch will be served. Please have reports to me by November the 13th. We will have the privilege of having the food that uh, was left over from the ladies' meeting from two weeks ago, November the December the 4th Advent lunch at St. John Jewelry Church. Guest speaker will be Reverend Doug Brown. Each church will bring one soup, two loaves of sandwiches, and one tray of desserts. The Community Christmas Fair will be held December the 12th. To reserve a seat, please call the Salvation Army. Applications for Christmas hampers are now being accepted at the Salvation Army and will be delivered the 18th to the 20th. Don't forget to save stamps and other religious articles to send to missions. Any more? No, thank you. Thank you, Lisa. <coughs> yes, James. Yes, are we doing craft dinner this year? Nope. So, no pies, nothing? I don't know. No corn? No, I don't know. I have no idea what we're doing. Well, Myrna raised her hand. Oh, no, she's just scratching her head. Um, I have no idea what we're doing. Um, that is usually, I don't know who makes that decision. Anybody know? Normally, it's Salvation Army Titus. Whatever group she's from. Yeah. So, this year, sorry, this year they are requesting Again? Okay. Again. Okay. But um, if that's not something that a church is um, led to, to do,
do. They, the food bank is still very needy, so they welcome any donations of food and, uh, and or gift cards for the campers. Well, let me ask another question. Do you want to collect something specific like we did last year? Yes or no? If so, please make a suggestion. Last year we collected, I think it was um, meat and tins and toilet paper. No suggestions? Nancy? I suggest we do the same thing this year. Sorry? Toilet paper and meat can meats. Yeah. Toilet yeah. paper and meat again this year? That's a motion from Nancy. Everybody in favor? Sure. <laughs> Looks like that's it. Okay. <laughs> toilet paper and can we please for our Christmas hamper donations as opposed to giving gift cards? Yes, Sharon. I was going to say, usually they always need laundry detergent also. Laundry detergent also? So now we're going to collect three things? Well, I don't know, like a smaller container of laundry detergent. Paper and can meet again this year. And if you want to bring laundry detergent, you most certainly may. We'll just stack it all up front here like we usually do and make a mountain out of it. Okay. Um, this time I would like to lead you in our prayer of invocation. And once again I will stop part with you there for a time of silent personal prayer. Shall we pray? Songs of praises we give to you, O Lord, as you feed us again this morning. As we as your family gather here, you feed us with your message, stale bread. You feed us at your table. In fact, every aspect of this service is food for our souls. We come with thankful hearts, lifting your name on high, the name that is above all names, that at your name we will bow in holy reverence and praise. You are our awesome God, who leads us beside still waters, but also with your Almighty arm, you redeem us. The bread you feed us is never stale, but always new and exciting as we are prodded to new heights when we believe fully in the one you have sent, our Savior Jesus Christ. We thank you for our time of praise and prayer and now offer up our personal silent prayers to you, our Creator. We are so blessed to be able to break the bread of life together. We praise you, O Lord, our God Almighty. You are faithful, forgiving, compassionate, full of loving kindness, grace, peace, and love. To you we dedicate this service, and it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Our God is an awesome God, number 179. We ask you to stand as you are able. faithfulness to us, we receive everything we need and more for this life. 
Your divine gift of salvation is more than we deserve. The offering collected is, a dedic is dedicated to you and it reflects our love and devotion to you whom we place above all. We pray through, we pray thankfully in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Our responsive reading is Psalm number 77, verses 11 through 19. It is in your bulletins and it will also be on the overhead. And I would like to lead you in a responsive reading at this time. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember the miracles of all the Lord. I will consider all your works. And meditate on all your righteous deeds. Your ways, God, are holy. You are the God who performs miracles. And display your power among the peoples. With your mighty arm, you redeem your people. The descendants of Jacob and Joseph. The water saw you, God. The water saw you and withered. The very depths were at cost. The clouds poured down water. The heavens resounded with thunder. Your thunder was heard in the whirlwind. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and waved. Your path led through the sea. Your way through the mighty waters. Though your footprints are not seen. Amen. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah. Number 682. We ask you to stand once again as you are able. Baptist, where we used to be, 
uh, his us, Ellen and Nancy. And Nancy had just returned from a trip in Peru. And she showed us a few pictures. And one of them was them staying up in a in tree houses, they called them, in the forest. And she had a picture looking down. And in the, on the pathway, there was a, a row of leaves. There was a whole line of leaves heading down this pathway. And underneath, this isn't the picture, but it gives you an idea. But under these leaves were ants. And it was an amazing picture. <laughs> it was just a stream of, of leaves um, heading through the forest. And um, this week when I was at mom and dad's, um, dad cuts out, out of his farm paper, he cuts out uh, this little section it's called eye opener. And it usually has jokes or quotes or something on it. And uh, one of them that he gave me happened to be about ants. So I thought, you know what? Today is going to be the message uh, for seniors moment is going to be about ants. So I'm going to start by reading some of the some of the quotes that came from the farm paper. All good work is done the way ants do things, little by little. I think everybody should study ants. They have an amazing four-part philosophy, philosophy. Never give up, look ahead, stay positive, and do all you can. Life is priceless, even to an ant. And from one of my favorite poets, Henry David Thoreau, it is not enough to be busy, so are the ants. The question is, what are we busy about? Ants are good citizens. They place group interests first. And from David Suzuki, he writes, if all humans disappeared today, the earth would start improving tomorrow. <laughs> if all the ants disappeared today, the earth would start dying tomorrow. If one looks a little closer at this beautiful world, there are always red ants underneath. David Lynch. Kings may see their palaces fall, but the ants will always have their dwellings. And one more from here. If ants are such busy workers, how come they find time to go to all the picnics? <laughs> Even God's word holds ants up to us as an example of wisdom, unselfish <coughs> unity, discipline, planning, and hard work. From the book of Proverbs, we read, Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler, yet it stores its provisions in summer and gathers its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. And poverty will come on you like a thief and scarcity like an armed man. That's from Proverbs 6. Four things on earth are small, yet they are extremely wise. Ants are creatures of little strength yet they store up their food in the summer. Let's pray. Lord, how amazing is your creation. Thank you for the example of the ant. Thank you for the lessons of wisdom and industriousness, of teamwork and preparation that they portray. Help us to adopt their ways and be wise according to your word. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Does anyone have anything they would like included in today's 
pastoral prayer. Sharon. Sorry, what was the family name? Henry White family. Henry White? Yeah. Okay, thank you. <coughs> I can read my own writing. Barb. In view of Bryce's intentions around the world, can we hold Israel up in prayer? Yes, thank you. Cindy. I think Mitch was the one Kathy had here. Yes, yeah. That's right. C H M A. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Cindy. I don't know if I'll ever see him again. Maybe before Christmas. He's coming young. Right. The 18th of December. Okay. Okay. Thanks. If perchance I can't read what I've written. You have all heard the requests, <laughs> and please include them in your own personal prayers um, in the coming weeks. Thanks. All right, let's go to God together in prayer. Our gracious and heavenly Father, we come to you today in the name of Jesus, the name that's above every name. Your word tells us that someday every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that you are Lord. We joyfully bow before you today and confess that you are our Lord. Lord, how great you are. You are our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. You alone are our good shepherd. In you there is life with no lack. You lead us to green pastures and beside still waters. You restore our anxious and weary souls. Even in the darkest valleys, we will not fear, for you are right here with us. You are always attentive to us. You provide for us. You guide us. You watch behind us and you go before us. We find safety, comfort, peace, and joy in your omnipotent and loving hands. We cast our cares on you, for you care for us. For nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Father, we confess to you that we are fearful that we waver in our faith and often question you. We admit that we say and do things that dishonor you. Almighty God, we ask that you would forgive us our sins, that you would remember them no more. Lord, we thank you for the peace and joy we feel knowing that you hear us, knowing that we indeed are forgiven and righteous in your eyes because of Jesus. Bend our wills to your ways. Help us always to see the sin in our lives that we may confess it to you and turn from it. Father, you teach us to think of others more highly than ourselves. And in that spirit, we bring before you 
those in our world. In Spain, Lord, comfort those who have lost loved ones in the flood and help them restore their cities and homes. For those in Ukraine, Gaza and Israel and all war-torn regions, Lord, help people to find refuge and all that they need. Motivate the authorities to reach peace agreements. And Lord, as the finale to the U.S. elections approach, we pray that democracy and the rule of law would be maintained. We pray that the results would be tabulated effectively and that the results would be accepted peacefully. God, we pray for all those suffering from addictions. We pray for those with physical and mental, emotional and financial challenges. We ask that you would use us to help. We ask that you would uplift and encourage those who are feeling disappointment or impairment or heartache. We ask for healing and the strength for us and for others to change their ways according to your will. Lord God, we ask that you would intervene in the lives of those who are ill. We bring before you Henry and Ross, Nancy and Ken, Sharon, Barb, Roberta and Doug, Elsie and Alan, Bob, Nancy and Doug, Richard and his daughter, Cindy, Kathy, Liv and Arlene, and each one of us, Lord, for each one of us needs your touch. Lord, we pray for those who are mourning. We pray for Henry White's family. We pray for the Windmill and Emerson family. Lord, and we ask that you would bless Mitch as he moves on to a new job. We pray that you would find a great replacement for him. Lord, restore our health, refresh our hope, guide us and mature us as your disciples that we may be a blessing to others in your name. We thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for your goodness and blessings. Speak to our hearts and minds as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Fill my cup, Lord. Please stand as you're able to sing.
before I begin today's message, please join me in prayer. Lord, we come to you eager to know your truth. Help us to hear and understand your message to us so that we may be blessed and in turn we may be a blessing to others. May what is spoken here be your truth. Grant us wisdom that we may seek and heed your direction. In Jesus we pray. Amen. <coughs> From the sixth chapter of John, verses 28 to 35, we read, Then they asked him, What must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Amen. <clears throat> Do you know what causes stale bread? What causes bread to go stale? <laughs> Right, being left out. It's a combination of that, of the environment, time, time <laughs> and chemical factors. And I won't go into the deepest details because I didn't realize it was so involved, but apparently there are three things that affect the staling of bread and what you've already suggested is certainly true. Firstly, the starch molecules realign themselves, causing recrystallization known as starch retrogradation. Secondly, there is a migration of moisture, which involves time and the environment. A migration of moisture from the starch granules and thirdly evaporation because of the environment. After baking, the two main components in starch, and I think you see them named up there, gradually return to a more crystalline structure. Water migrates between proteins and starch, altering the gluten network. And moisture is also lost to the environment. <coughs> so you may well ask, as fascinating as the breakdown of how bread stales is, what does that have to do with us and with this passage from the Gospel of John? Well, what I want to do is to remind us that we need to realign ourselves with Jesus, the bread of life. I want to impress upon us the importance of migrating back to a daily diet, diet of heavenly manna. I want to alert us to examine our environmental choices for our own spiritual well-being. In the last few weeks, God's Holy Spirit has seamlessly transitioned us from messages centered around the existence and dangers of false 
teachers, exhortations to bear good fruit, and the necessity of good works as an expression of faith. Today's reading opens with Jesus being asked, what must we do to do the works of God? And the answer, Jesus answered that question saying, the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. To believe in Jesus as the one sent by God. That is the work of God. And doesn't that sound simple? Doesn't that sound easy? But belief encompasses our whole life. What we think and do and say and who we are. To believe in Jesus as the one sent by God, that is the work of God. And it's pretty amazing because faith is credited as righteousness. Christ is the culmination of the law so that there may be righteousness for everyone who believes. The only work that a man can do that is acceptable to God is to believe in Christ as he has commanded. The word work that Jesus is referring to here is not the good works that follow faith and demonstrate one's faith is genuine. Faith alone saves. But the faith that truly saves is not alone for it inspires a desire to express and share an attitude of gratitude and joy. It takes us down roads we would not otherwise go. Faith causes us to find the power to do things we cannot do on our own. If you had told me, how many years, how old am I? If you had told me 40 or 50 years ago that I would be standing here, I would have told you, you are crazy. I was a shy kid, sitting, country kid, sitting on a bus. We, faith leads us to do things we cannot do on our own. And faith is a gift. How much, how amazing is that? Faith causes us to find the power to do things we cannot do on our own. To love others. To put them first. To pray for others. To seek God and to obey him. If you read the preceding verses of this chapter, you will see that Jesus had just the day before fed 5,000 men plus women and children at no cost. In faith, they ate it, trusting its source. Yet here they are testing Jesus, saying, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you. What will you do? They arrogantly ask Jesus. They want another sign. They're testing him. Challenging him to one-up the fact that their ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. To appreciate the scope and miraculous nature of how God fed their ancestors in the wilderness, I want to turn to the 16th chapter of Exodus, where the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. We are just like them. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. 
Tell them at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the dew was gone, thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need. Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. <coughs> the Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some little. And when they measured it by the omer, which is about three pounds, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. Then Moses said to them, No one is to keep any of it until morning. However, some of them paid no attention to Moses. They kept part of it until morning, but it was full of maggots and began to smell. So Moses was angry with them. Each morning, everyone gathered as much as they needed, and when the sun grew hot, it melted away. God gave the Israelites something new, something that they had never received before. God rained down, <clears throat> God rained down upon them the grain of heaven. Human beings ate the bread of angels. He sent them all the food they could eat. Manna, which literally means, what is it? The grain of heaven, the bread of angels, God sent to them and provided for them daily. Now, he did for the Sabbath, they gathered enough the day before, and, and miraculously, that, that Sabbath manna lasted and did not rot. But God did this to teach them that man does not live on bread alone, <clears throat> but, on every word, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. And he fed them this way for 40 years. Their clothes did not wear out, and their feet did not swell during these 40 years. What a legacy. To be fed by God daily. And that's my point about stale bread. We must turn to God daily. We need to be fed by him daily to open our Bibles daily, to talk with him daily. Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. The manna that God rained down from heaven was to be gathered daily and consumed daily, except, as I mentioned, for the Sabbath. If it was not gathered, you did not eat. You did not receive what you needed for the day. Can you see where I'm going with this? If you did not gather, you did not eat. You did not receive what you needed for the day. And if you tried to hoard it, it only rotted and became full of maggots and began to smell. And isn't it the same with us today? Jesus taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. 
Yes, we are to ask for God's provision for our daily physical needs, for we know that he himself gives everyone life and breath and everything else. But we need to return to Jesus daily to go to him every day in our planning and scheduling. When considering our goals and priorities, we need to commune with him daily. To be fed by him, to be encouraged and taught and disciplined and trained in righteousness by him daily so that we as the servants of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. That way we are not feeding on the stale bread of living on remembrances of past glories and experiences. If we are dwelling on the joy and peace and power of what God did in the past, it means we're not growing in grace and gathering fresh manna, new lessons and insights and disciplines from Jesus daily. We need to be reminded that it is because of the Lord's great mercies we are not consumed. For his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. For great is his faith faithfulness. We need to take in his word. We need to drink in his living water daily because sometimes we, we relate to Asaph, a well-known believer and temple music director during the reign of King David, who wrote the 73rd Psalm, which bemoans the fact that all day long I have been afflicted, and every morning brings new punishments. Sometimes we are in that place where Asaph was. All day long I have been afflicted, and every morning brings new punishments. Sometimes that's the way we feel. So how much more important is it that every day we need to see what God has to feed us. And as we spend time with him in prayer and with him, we receive that daily sustenance. As 19th century American evangelist D.L. Moody puts it, If we would be strong and vigorous, we must go to God daily. A man can no more take in a supply of grace for the future than he can eat enough today to last him for the next six months, or take sufficient air into his lung at once to, to, to sustain life for a week to come. We must draw upon God's boundless stores of grace from day to day as we need it. When they ask Jesus for this bread, Jesus startles them by declaring, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. This is a phenomenal statement. First, by equating himself with bread, Jesus is saying that he is essential for life. Second, the life Jesus is referring to is not physical, but eternal. Jesus is trying to get the Jews thinking outside of the physical realm and into the spiritual realm. He's contrasting what he brings as their Messiah with the bread he miraculously created the day before. That was physical bread that perishes. He is spiritual bread that brings eternal life. Thirdly, and very importantly, what we see here is Jesus making a claim to deity, to divinity. When Jesus declares, I am the bread of life, 
This statement is the first of the I am statements in John's Gospel. The phrase I am is the covenant name of God. Revealed to Moses at the burning bush. The phrase speaks of self-sufficient existence, or what theologians refer to as a seity, which is an attribute, the quality of being self-derived or self-originated, which only God possesses. It is also a phrase the Jews who were listening would have automatically understood as a claim to divinity. Fourth, notice the words come and believe. This is an invitation for those listening to place their faith in Jesus as the Messiah and Son of God. This invitation to come is found throughout John's Gospel. Coming to Jesus involves making a choice to forsake the world and follow him. Believing in Jesus means placing our faith in him that he is who he says he is. That he will do what he says he will do and that he is the only one who can. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Fifthly, there are the words hunger and thirst. Again, it must be noted that Jesus isn't talking about alleviating physical hunger and thirst. The key is found in another statement Jesus made back in his Sermon on the Mount. In Matthew 5, verse 6, Jesus says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. When Jesus says those who come to him will never hunger and those who believe in him will never thirst, he's saying he will satisfy our hunger and thirst to be made righteous in the sight of God. If there is anything the history of human religion tells us, it is that people seek to earn their way to heaven. This is such a basic human desire because God created us with eternity in mind. The Bible says God has placed the desire for eternity in our hearts. The Bible also tells us that there is nothing we can do to earn our way to heaven because we've all sinned and fall short. The only thing our sin earns us is death. There is no one who is righteous in himself or herself. Our dilemma is we have a desire we cannot fulfill no matter what we do. That is where Jesus comes in. He and he alone can fulfill that desire in our hearts for righteousness through the divine transaction. For our sake, God made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him, in Jesus, we might become the righteousness of God. When Christ died on the cross, he took the sins of mankind upon himself and made atonement for them. When we place our faith in him, our sins are assigned to Jesus. And his righteousness is credited to us. Jesus satisfies our hunger and thirst for righteousness. Let us daily realign ourselves, migrate to, and create an environment where Jesus is our bread of life. He is our bread of life. Let us go to him every day for a new morsel to savor. Let's pray. We praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for giving us life, for feeding us in the mysteries of faith. Help us to do your work, God, to believe in Jesus. For when we have faith in Jesus, it changes us. Faith affects our attitude, our outlook, our 
purposes and our priorities. Thank you, Jesus, for being willing to feed and sustain us. Thank you for your presence and your daily desire to commune with us. Reassure those who are hesitant to come to you and to believe in you. Grant them faith in you, that they know what it is to never go hungry or thirsty. In the name of Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, we pray. Amen. As we prepare to come to the communion table, let us stand to sing the first three verses of hymn 413, Break Thou the Bread of Life. Lord, we come before you aware that we do not deserve to come to this your table to eat and to drink in remembrance of you. Instead, we come trusting in the redemption we know through faith in your son, Jesus, who died for our sins and was resurrected by the power of God and who reigns in heaven until he returns again as prophesied by the prophet Zechariah, saying, In that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, which is in the front of Jerusalem on the east. 
and the Mount of Olives will be split in its middle from east to west by a very large valley, so that half of the mountain will move toward the north and the other half toward the south. Faithful through all generations, Almighty Father, we ask for your forgiveness for all the ways we have fallen short and fallen away from your commands, for our prideful abandonment, for our selfish fear. Have mercy upon us. Forgive us what is past, so that our futures may be used to glorify you. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. As you prepare your elements, let me read scripture that reminds us the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed <coughs> took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it saying this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us also give thanks for the bread. Would you bow your heads, please? God, you are faithful and true, and your word tells us that we will die in our sins. But you've, Lord, made a way for us to have our sins forgiven through your son, Jesus. He bore them on the cross. And when we humble ourselves, when we acknowledge our sinfulness, and when we seek your forgiveness, you cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Your body was broken as you hung on the cross, bearing our sins. And for those who accept the free gift of salvation, there is joy. Because as believers, we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Let us eat this bread in remembrance of Christ's sacrifice for us. And let us be thankful. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us also give thanks for the cup. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, at the last supper, you said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you. We come with thankful hearts as we drink this cup, that through your life, death, and resurrection, the promised new covenant is fulfilled. Therefore, as we partake in this supper, we thank you for all the covenant benefits that you have secured for us. Hebrews, 7, Hebrews 8, verses 7 through 13 describes it this way. New covenant which provides perfect forgiveness. By your perfect sacrifice, the new covenant means our God will remember their sins no more and welcome us into his embrace. With heartfelt, humble reverence, we accept this cup from you and give thanks. Amen. Let us drink this cup in remembrance of Christ's perfect sacrifice. We 
We praise God for feeding us in these holy mysteries. Please join me in singing the final two verses of our last hymn, Break Thou the Bread of Life. The joy of the Spirit and the peace of Christ be with you now and forevermore. <laughs> 